I'm at Northeast Florida Regional Airport and today I'm going to check out a 152 and show you guys most of what I have to do to fly a 152 and be a safe pilot. I've got my Cessna 152 checklist ready to go. Absolutely beautiful day. So I'm going to put this GoPro on my head and give you a first person view of this flight starting with the pre-flight checklist. There will always be some paperwork and in this plane, it's down here. What you'll want to do is make sure that all the papers are current. And I'm not going to get into all this, but this is also the POH for this plane. You need to keep that in the plane. So that's the handbook, flight plan. I don't need to file a flight plan. Fuel is on. If the fuel is not on, this lever would be up, but it is down, so the fuel is on. Control lock, I'm going to take the control lock out, throw it in the back, turn the master on. This is the battery. So I'm gonna flip that on and I'm gonna extend the flaps. Check the flaps, make sure that they're working properly. I do not need to test the pedo heat because it is not equipped. Now I'm gonna turn on all the lights. All right, and I'm gonna come out here and check my lights. See the landing light is working. The red light is working. Got another one over here, it's on. I'm gonna come around the back. You can see my beacon up there is on. Tail light is working, everything looks good, the flaps look good, and we can turn the master off. Fuel gauges are another thing that you can check, but you don't want to trust those. You want to go by the amount of fuel you have. You do not trust your fuel quantity gauge. You should not have to rely on that. Exterior summary. So we're going to start with the fuel quantity. I've got a stick right here, and I'm going to climb up. Check and see how much fuel we have. Stick this in, cover it up, pull it out. And we've got almost eight gallons on this side. Make sure that that's nice and tight. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Eight on this side, so about 15 gallons total to be safe, which is more than plenty to go up and do a few laps in the pattern, and that's all I'm doing today. Quality of the fuel, I'm gonna use a fuel sump. This particular plane has three spots that we're going to check. And what I'm looking for here now is any water that could be in the fuel tank. And if there is any water, it will be separated from the fuel. And you'll see a clear liquid in there that's separated. And that's not good. And all you would do if that does happen is keep draining it until all the water is out. I'm gonna come over here and check this side. And then the other one, is up front here, right there. Make sure that there's no water in there and there's not. And I'm gonna go back up and pour it back in. We're gonna do the engine oil now. Very important that we have enough oil. Okay, and there's between four and five quarts. This thing always feels like it's gonna break. Anyways, putting that back down. Inspecting the prop. I'm gonna make sure there's no dings or any cracks here. Always be careful around the propeller. Treat it like a hot prop because there may be a hot magneto. Cowling inspection, there's a belt in here. I'm gonna pull on it, make sure it's nice and tight. And also make sure there's nothing in here that shouldn't be, like bird's nests. For the exhaust, I'm just making sure there's no cracks and that it's not loose. This is the stall horn up here, and I'm just gonna make sure that nothing is obstructing it. Surfaces and controls. I'm also gonna untie here, and then I'm gonna go on to looking at the aileron, and I'm making sure that there's nothing broken in here and everything's working properly. There's nothing cracked, right? Nothing loose. Bolts are nice. Making sure that the elevator's working properly. Also, the rudder. Pedo tube and static ports on this plane are right here. And make sure that this is clear, there's nothing in there. Static port on the 152 is right there, this little hole, and that looks good. Make sure the tires are filled up. Untie this side as well. Make sure that all the antennas are up there. Got one, two, three back here. Everything looks good and I'm gonna do a final walk around now. Walk around the plane one last time. Everything's untied. There's no tie in the back. That makes the initial checklist and exterior summary checklist complete.
Now we're going to move on to the interior. And if I had a passenger, there'd be a passenger brief. I wrote down my hobs and my tack time for the flight school so they know how long I flew, how long the engine was running. And I'm gonna look at the circuit breakers here. All right, make sure they're all in. But at this point, this is where I would get in the plane. So I'm going to put on the headset and we'll go from there. Startup checklist, heat track back lock. The seat is where I want it to be. The avionics would normally be off right now, but I'm going to leave them on for the purposes of this video. Carb heat, off, mixture, full rich. Throttle, slight, prime. This plane has already flown once today. I probably don't need to prime it, but we'll see. I'm gonna check the brakes. I'm gonna say clear to make sure that everyone knows I'm about to start up. Clear. I'm gonna open the window, shut the door. I already have my seatbelt on and my shoulder strap on. Beacons on. And she started right up. All right, once she's started up, I'm gonna come down to about a thousand RPM. And I don't need the mixture to be full rich when we're idling. St. Augustine ground, Saratoga 5-1, Papa Golf, Alpha Road to Fuel, over. Saratoga 5-1, Papa Golf, St. Augustine ground, taxi via Delta, and they just pulled away with the truck. I haven't heard that it's ready yet, but I'm assuming it is. I haven't contacted ground yet, so I, I can leave the radio off so that you guys can hear me. But I did want to mention most of the time while I'm flying, I will probably just uh, let the a ATC roll and not be talking over it too much because I want you guys to hear uh, what it's like communicating with the tower and I want to make sure that I'm not distracted and when they call my name I, I hear them instead of missing it. So won't do a whole lot of talking once I start taxiing and flying but a little bit at the right times. I'm gonna check my oil pressure. Oil pressure looks good right now. Seat belts, harness, flaps up. I already put the flaps up. Heat, vent, defrost, don't need any of that. Live in Florida, it's about 65 degrees right now. Now I'm gonna check the ATIS. I have my airport diagram here, by the way, for St. Augustine, Northeast Florida Regional. The ATIS is 119.625. St. Augustine Tower Information, Charlie, 17470. Wind 090 at six. Visibility 10, sky conditions. 7,500 scattered. Temperature 18, dew point 11, altimeter 3014. Instrument aircraft expect a visual approach, runway 13 in use. Notice this German. Runway 220 closed. VOR out of service. ILS glide path and localizer operating unmonitored. Okay, so I've got the ATIS, I've got the information I need. They say Charlie, and I, when I say Charlie to them, that means that I have the current information that was just given to me. Wind 090 at six. Not much wind today, and that's one of the reasons I'm going flying. It's just absolutely beautiful. My altimeter is 30.14, so I'm going to change that. Make sure that my heading is set to the compass. Test the radio, so I'm gonna turn it back up and just make sure that my radio works when I hit the button. All right, so I tapped it and it's working. Change to ground, which is 121.175. Now we're gonna test the brakes. I'm gonna start moving a little bit. We got over the wire there and the brakes are working. Attitude indicator, looking good. Time to contact ground. I'm also gonna request a closed pattern, which means that I wanna stay in the traffic pattern. So that ground knows that my intentions are to not leave the airspace. My instruments are looking good. My oil pressure is still looking good. Remember, for communicating, it's who you are, where you are, what you want to do. St. Augustine Ground, Cessna 5165 five Bravo. Cessna 5165 five Bravo, St. Augustine Ground. 65 Bravo is at the overflow right now and would like to a closed pattern information, Charlie. Cessna 5165 five Bravo, runway 13, intersection departure Bravo 1, taxi via Bravo 2 and Bravo, verify it as Charlie. Taxi to 13 via Bravo 2 and Bravo. I do have Charlie. 65 Bravo. The wind is at 090 right now. So, a lot of people need to remember that even when you're taxiing, you still need to fly the airplane. They need to make sure that your ailerons are in the correct position. 
you can use the wind sock a little bit for reference. So right now the wind's kind of at a 45 degree angle coming from right behind me to the right. And it's just something you need to keep in mind as you're taxiing to still fly the airplane, especially on a windy day, to make sure that your ailerons and your elevator are in the correct position. And that would be when the wind's behind you, you want to pitch down and away. And when the wind's in front of you, you want to have the elevator neutral and the ailerons into the wind. Nice slow taxi out to 1-3. Absolutely beautiful day. I don't think it's too busy right now, but Northeast Florida Regional Airport is actually one of the busiest airports in Florida. We have two flight schools here, and this is where I got my private pilot's license a couple years ago. Right before we take off, I will do a run-up, which is also part of the checklist. There's a nice big area over here for a run-up where I can also turn around and be facing into the wind. Very convenient. I'm gonna turn around. And now we're going to do the run-up checklist. So if I so this is, is to test a few things, make sure that everything's working right properly. So brakes are set, fuel is on. We're gonna have trim to take off. Trim is right here. We're gonna test the flight controls real quick. All right. Flight controls look good. And I'm gonna put the mixture in to the best power. The primer is in and locked. Now we're going to come to 1700. RPM and check the max. I'm gonna turn off the left one. There should be a hundred drop, which there is. Now we're gonna check the right one. Under drop. So check the left and right Mac. They both look good. Check hard carb heap. There should also be a little loss of power yeah, with the carb heap, which there is. And we're gonna check the amps and the volts. Look good. Oil pressure is looking good. Bravo, cross runway two, hold runway six. And we're gonna come back to idle on the throttle. Also vacuum. Uh, the vacuum was looking good. Not to mention that. And now I can taxi up to the uh, runway to 1-3 and hold short. And that's where I'm going to switch to tower and contact tower to take off. Now pre-takeoff checklist. Flaps. Zero degrees. Ground flyer seven Extra four bash power. Holding point Foxtrot. Holding short of Bravo. For Southwest departure with Charlie. Car peed off. And heading is to compass still. I'm gonna check my instruments one more time. Everything's looking good. Also wanted to mention I'm at 1200, uh, Squawk 1200 for flying VFR. Now, pre-takeoff checklist, doors, windows, everything's good, landing light, don't need it. Probes are on, and I'm ready to go. Sagastine Tower, Cessna 5165 Bravo, is holding short of 1-3, ready for departure. That's it. 65 Bravo, maintain runway heading. I'll call the left turn for the power of the pattern. Runway 1-3, intersection Bravo 1, clear for takeoff, Cessna left down to base. Clear for takeoff, 65 Bravo. Left pattern. Hey, Tower, it's 96 Alpha Tango. You need me to hold the upwind or can I turn? Well, you can start the right turn, number 6 Alpha Tango. We've got an extra about uh, just coming up five miles southeast. We'll be joining the down. Early turn will be great. Thank you. Tower, clear for takeoff. Number one, Whiskey Mike. Traffic just by the towers. The Sierra Center right turn uh, westbound climbing out of 700. Just keep an eye out. Oh, here we go. Fuel full throttle. Number one, Whiskey Mike Tower. Traffic just south of the airport, uh, turning southbound to Cirrus, climbing out of 800. Whiskey Mike Tower is working. And we're going to rotate. We're headed right up. And Augustine Tower, Flyer 711, holding point Bravo 1, runway 13, ready for departure. Flyer 711, San Augustine Tower, hold short, runway 13, line traffic. Holding short, runway 13, Flyer 711. 6 Alpha 10, long course traffic to behind your left, no factor. If you wish, advisories, Jax is 120.75. Have a good day. We'll see you in 96 Alpha Tango. Whiskey Mike, still looking for you. Whiskey Mike, no factor, 11 o'clock and 2 miles climbing. Number 1 Whiskey Mike, right traffic, runway 13, clear to land, will be 1 departure, Bravo. Bravo. Roger, 6-5 Bravo. 
I was maintaining my upwind until they cleared me to turn left, and now I'm going to turn a left crosswind. Large 5, CQ3, if able, turn right at Bravo 2, kind of ground. Turn right Bravo 2, contact ground, side at 5, CQ3. Fire 711, fire runway heading into our advise, I'll call the right turn, runway 13, intersection, Bravo 1, close take off. Fire 711, fly runway heading, you will call the turn, runway. I want to wish you, Mike, one more departure, Cessna, roll on the roll from uh, Bravo 1 to space accordingly, please. Alright, so, I am now able to turn for my downwind. I reduced the throttle to cruising speed. Fire so we're going to stay turn left down to be looking for an extra on the opposite side. Shouldn't be a factor, just advise your traffic inside. 6-5 Bravo, roger. Looking for traffic. I got him, 6-5 Bravo. Number 6-5 Bravo, follow the extra number 2, on a 1-3, clear touch and go. Number 2, clear touch and go, on 1-3, 6-5 Bravo. Alright, I'm just passing midfield now, on my downwind, the altitude of this pattern. Pattern altitude is uh, a thousand feet at this airport. My instruments are, have been looking good, and I'm going to start my descent. Fuel's on. RP. I'm going to bring that on, and I'm going to reduce power to 1700 RPM, and I'm going to put 10 degrees of flaps down. Start to slow down here a little bit. Right, seven, we're on turning stuff it. Someone wish you might thanks for help if able uh, Alpha 3 contact ground and uh, thanks as well for the other stuff. Uh, my uh, number one traffic that I'm landing after has touched down. 751 traffic's down with a base, run A13 at Bravo 1, turn left on course, quick takeoff. So now I'm turning take base. Uh, 751, that went my 1 3, thank you. Okay. Car beats on. And I'm going to go down to about 15 degrees of flaps. Starting to descend here on my base. Altimeter is set. Instruments are looking good. Heading is still looking good. Give a little more throttle into this turn. Getting a little slow. Very important to not stall out when you're turning. So oh, now I am on a final 413. I've been cleared for a touch and go. So I'm going to touch down and take right back off. I've been right over US 1 here. State Road, US-1. See if I can get in a little ground effect. Fire 7-11 for change approved. Nice soft touchdown. Frequency change approved, fire 7 Laps up, RP in. Uh, tower to Cathalon, 2 9 we're going to take right back up, full throttle. 6-5 Bravo, midfield call, what's your request? 6-5 Bravo is midfield for touch and go. 6-5 Bravo, run a 1-3, clear touch and go. Clear touch and go, 1-3. Overshot that one. That's okay, plenty of time to line up. Thanks, sir. I got a set suggestion left on the on app approach for now. Suggest about a 1-30 heading, we'll see how it works. And expect on a 1-3, I'll advise your sequence on a little bit. Number 4, Lima Quebec. I want your indicated speed, number 4, Lima Quebec. Indicated speed is 112 knot. Thanks, sir. If you were just at 130 heading for now, number 4 Lima Quebec suggested, and I'll have further instructions for you shortly. 4 Lima Quebec, turning the heading of 130. I'm going to start to reduce power. Fire 734, if you change your cruise on. 219 on the. Uh, I have one three full stop. Fire seven thirty four. Working my way down, down, down to ground effect. Fire seven three four. Fire seven eighteen. Wheels down. What's your indicated speed? 
Yeah, we'll continue, we're showing one of Laps up. Power beat in. Gonna do one more lap. There we go, down to win the call base. Call base. Yeah, I'm up. Number 65 Bravo at the midfield point, make one right 36, report reestablished on down. At midfield, we'll make right 360, reestablished down one, 65 Bravo. Oh, I've been requested to make a right 360 right about now. And I'm going to go right back into the downwind. Alright, so now re-entering the downwind at about 45 degrees. Not quite 45 degrees, but... They want to Bobby looking for traffic just inside a two mile final. I'm not sure the type. Advice when you see him. Roger, looking for traffic. Six side Bravo. Fire 719 to Bravo 2, kind of ground. Have a good day. Bravo 2, ground. Uh, Fire 719. And once you're a pop traffic, you're right on the opposite downs of company Cessna. Advise when you get him. If you don't see him, I'll call the base to follow you in a little bit. Looking for traffic, yeah, pop up. Thanks, number 65 Bravo, your traffic just at a mile at 700. He's a full stop. Advise when you see him. I have the traffic, 65 Bravo. Traffic in sight. Number 65 Bravo, yeah, pop up. The traffic on file, number 2, runway 13, clear touch and go. Okay, number 2. Clear touch and go, 6-5 Bravo. Actually, we would like a full stop. 6-5 Bravo, that's fine. Sure, follow the traffic still on the final. Still number 2 on a 1-3 clear to land, number 6-5 Bravo. 1-3 clear to land, 6-5 Bravo. Once you're a pop, understand you see the Cessna on the opposite downwind. Follow him to the airport, number 3, run a 1-3. Now, once you're a pop, did you hear my lesser? One ship up, yes, sir. Well, you see the Cessna on the opposite side turning down to base, correct? We see it. Yeah, up, up, up. Roger. Making sure that they have me. I see them. I'll keep my eye on those guys. Alright, so I'm doing a full stop now. Number four, the Anchor and Lima, Quebec, if able, turn right at Bravo 2, contact ground, have a good day. Right at Bravo 2, contact ground for Lima, Quebec. Like I said, busy airport, haven't been able to talk very much during this flight, which is fine. Nice and bumpy. All right, we'll do one more landing here. Call it a day. This will be a full stop. Looks like there's a couple planes at that first exit, so I might go down to the next one. We'll see. Hold the power, hearing a nice ground effect. Landing nice and slow. Scene over scene time, fly over 563, holding side 13 on Bravo 1, ready for departure. Number 65 Bravo, turn right Bravo 2, then contact ground. Right on Bravo 2, on contact ground, 65 Bravo, thanks. Thank you, departure 563, send off the entire hold short, runway 13. Holding side 13, fly over 563. Alright, I have Put the flaps up. And this is the point where I could open the window if I want or open the door. Uh, what's that? Wind 1208. I'm going to switch to ground, which is 121. 17. Ground, this is Atlantic Fuel Truck 7. Atlantic Fuel Truck 7, charging ground. Yes, I'm up. Uh, uh, back in, we'd like to head back to the overflow via the service road and the Bravo. Atlantic 7, proceed as requested. Proceed as requested, Atlantic 7.
bring my mixture out a little bit. Our 719 across runway 6. Cross 6, 719. So we see ground, Cessna 5165 Bravo is at Bravo 2 and Bravo to taxi to overflow. 5165 Bravo, so I ground, taxi straight ahead to overflow. Straight ahead to overflow, 65 Bravo. Alright, I've been cleared to taxi. 584 Lima Quebec, cross runway 6. Back to overflow. Or Lima Quebec, cross. There's a lot of construction going on at this airport right now, so uh, they've got a runway closed and they usually the flight school has their planes up at the front. Right now, this is called the overflow parking, which is where they've been uh, staging a lot of the planes, why they do all this construction. It's a mess up there, but when it's done, it'll be really nice in the next couple months. The brand new asphalt, they had to redo a bunch of pipes. Ah, nice smooth flight. One thing I was trying to mention, but it was really busy on the radio, is when you have a crosswind, I'm actually coming in crabbing. So, it's tough to explain, I will show it in a video sometime, but you're actually angled a different way than you're moving, because you got to angle yourself into the wind. And then, uh, toward the end, uh, as you're getting closer to the runway, you're going to use your rudder and line up to, uh, to the runway. So, it's kind of wild the first time you see it, when you go fly, and you're on final and you're coming in crooked. They're like, whoa, this is crazy. A lot of people don't expect it. Alright, where should I park this thing? I park it right in between these guys. Get this baby turned around. Alright. Now, securing. ELT, we're going to make sure that it's silent, which it is. Now, normally I would turn the avionics off here, but for the video, again, I'm just going to leave them on. I'm going to bring the mixture out. Now I'm going to turn the mags off. And the master battery off. That was great. Thanks for sticking around. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing a little bit of what goes into flying a 152. It's fun, it's a really good machine to know how to fly. It can teach you a lot. Most of my time is in one. And I also really like the views. I just went up in a Piper uh, Warrior with a low wing and you just don't really get the same view. And when you're flying for hobby purposes and sightseeing purposes, it's nice to have a high wing and be able to look down and see everything really well, especially flying passengers. Great flight. Life is good. I'm gonna push the plane back now and get it out of everyone's way. Stop talking. After this, it's just writing down the engine time that was used, the control lock, and put this guy back in. That keeps the controls locked so the plane's not going all over the place when it's windy. Put chocks down on the tires, which I don't need to do. And then, of course, tie it down. So I'm gonna tie it down. The pitot cover would normally go on the pitot tube, but I don't think there's one in here. Sometimes with flight schools, you don't have all that stuff. <laughs> and then just make sure the doors are shut and that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Look forward to doing some more flights and uh, happy to talk about anything aviation. I absolutely love it. I just fly for a hobby. So if you guys ever want to chat anyth about anything, let me know.